Welcome to the ISB webinar, Student Learning. Do boards really make a difference? Yes, they do, and we'll find out more about that. This webinar is designed to provide candidates running for the school board insights on the importance of the whole board team to keep the focus on student learning and then to talk about what that work looks like because sometimes that can be sort of a mystery. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the, on the IASB website under the school board election page along with all our other resources that you can find there. My name is Lou Gavist and I'm on the board development team here at IASB and I'm one of the co-facilitators and I'm going to ask my colleagues to introduce themselves and let's start with Tammy. Hello everyone, my name is Tammy Drawbaugh. I too am part of the board uh, development team, one of the directors at IASB. I'm also finishing up a 15 year career on the local school board, my local school board in Muscatine and seven of those years as board president. So we're glad you're here today. Harry, I think you're up next. Thank you. I'm Harry Heiligenthal. No, you don't have to worry about spelling or saying my last name today. Thanks for joining us. I've been on staff for a little over 21 years at ISB and absolutely love working with board members. So thanks for joining and learning more about the, the work of the board. And last but certainly not least, Emily, would you take a minute and introduce yourself, please? Yeah, hi, I'm Emily Rhodes. I am support for the board development team and I'll be kind of manning the ship today. So uh, feel free to message me if you're having any issues. And that's thanks support. Here. Thanks, Emily, that's support with a capital S, by the way. Thank you so much, everyone, for introducing yourself. Um, today's engagement, we at, on the board development team really pride ourselves and enjoy making these kind of learning experiences conversational and meaningful for you. So every now and then we're going to pause and give you time to unmute yourselves and ask questions. We just ask that when you do, just tell us who you are, give us your first name. But, uh, but at any point, you can also drop questions into the chat feature and we'll work to answer those questions during our discussion. And we're, we're also going to leave time at the end for any final uh, questions that haven't been asked or answered. In the meantime, Emily, we have a quick poll to see who's participating today. Would you please launch that poll? Yep. Okay, so if you don't have a pop-up blocker, and if you're watching this live, you should see the poll that has been launched. If you are watching this as a recording, you won't see the poll, but we do have the slide up so you can see what the question is. And the question is, who is participating? Are you a candidate? Are you a former board member? Sometimes we get folks who want to rerun. Uh, current board members, it's great to come in as a refresher, see what we're talking about and to enhance your learning and add to the conversation. Superintendent, business manager, board secretary, or other. All right, we've got a majority of people answered here, so I'm going to share out those results. All right. Thanks, Emily. Looks like about 73% of you, most of the majority are candidates. Well, thank you for your interest in, in um, uh, serving. <laughs> Harry's excited. But we also have a few um, current board members and even some staff, current staff at our local districts. Thank you, everyone, and welcome. Okay, so just trying to organize myself so I can see the screen. Uh, Emily, can you see the goals or what is up right now? Uh, still the poll um, slides. Okay. There we go. How's, how's that one? Okay, yep. thank you. All right, so our goals for today, we're going to be looking at the big picture for uh, board service. This is really focusing on all students and what that really means. We're gonna be talking about what we know from the research and good practice uh, years working with boards on how boards do make a significant difference for their districts and for students and what that work looks like. And then we're also gonna be talking about the opportunities and challenges that board teams have for really keeping the focus on the main thing and that's serving all students. Okay. Sorry, I am having, there we go. Let's discuss now the, we'll get started with the first goal of board service. And that's the, 
the main reason why people run, we hear, and the moral obligation to ensure that the board is focusing on high and equitable education for all students. We know that school boards are charged with providing oversight for two of the community's most precious resources, that's taxes and children. And most people want to talk about students over taxes, and we're gonna focus on that today. And today we're gonna to focus on the, as I shared earlier, the moral responsibility that school boards have to, to govern well and ensure that all children receive a quality education. Harry, I think you're gonna talk about the authority of the board a little bit. I sure am, and it happens a lot smoother when I remember to unmute myself at the beginning, <laughs> doesn't it, Lou? <laughs> Anyway, um, we, we talked about this in a, in a prior webinar, so it may be a repeat, but the concept of authority is granted to the board as a whole, when you're working as a body, not to you as an individual. And, and, and what we see and hear and watch uh, boards across the state challenged by during the year is that oftentimes or sometimes community members or the public assumes or believes that individual board members have authority, but this isn't accurate. The courts have been really clear and consistent over the years about the board's authority only existing when you're acting as a whole body. And I, 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 we appreciate that the, the, the comment from sitting or existing board members who say, it's helpful to remind constituents, I'm only one vote. So, how does that fit in in terms of student achievement? Well, as a collective body, as a board team, um, when you work with the superintendent and you keep in front of you what's best for all students, not some, not subgroups, not just pockets, but all students, that is really going to serve your community, your students, and your board well when you keep that in mind. And when you when you when you find yourselves reflecting on what do we mean by all students, what a great opportunity again for the board as a whole to define what does the board the board team mean by all students, and then hold that near and dear to you as you make decisions based on the concept of we're here to best serve all students. So thanks, Lou. Thanks, Harry. So when we talk about all, we put together this slide to demonstrate a picture of that. These are uh, students from Iowa. When we say all students, that's exactly what we mean. All students, as Harry said, it, it, it doesn't ma really matter what uh, constituency might elect you. In some districts, which town you reside in, uh, who your children are that may be in the district or grandchildren, it really is about serving and making decisions for all students, as Harry said. And as Harry said, this can be kind of a mystery um, to the public and to candidates. And so we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about that today. Tammy, I think you're going to talk about this quote. Thanks, Lou. I love this quote. Of course, parents want the best for their own children. That's their job. As a school board member, it's my job to want the best for each and every student. Um, this came to us from uh, an Iowa School Board member, and I love this quote. I feel like this captures the idea of what the board's duty is and the focus. Back to that note, Lou and Harry, you both said it about all students. Thanks, Tammy. So now we're going to have a discussion where we're going to interact a little bit around this idea, and then we're going to invite you, uh, those of you joining, if you have any questions. But let's think about uh, that quote that Tammy just talked about and then respond to this question as, as um, Tammy and Harry as a candidate, when it comes to serving all students, what is important to keep in mind? And potentially as a new board member, uh, what could help a new board member grow in viewpoints and, and understandings? And Tammy, why don't you start us off? Thanks, Lou. For me, I um, once upon a time as a new board member, what I had to recognize is that I only knew my own lived experience. So I knew my own students really well, 
but I had a lot of students in my own district that I needed to get to know and I needed to understand more about what they looked like. And I don't mean physical attributes, I mean what made uh, what makes each of those students up. And so learning what your district looks like and what that picture is really becomes important as you try to understand what is it that all students need. Thanks, Tammy. And I think that reminds me when I was a classroom teacher and at one point in elementary, I had over 30 students. And you can imagine in one collective little group of students, there was a wide range of skills and abilities. Well, and if you think about that and then expand that across to a whole district, you're going to have lots of different needs from different students and different student populations. And so when we talk about equity and resources, that doesn't mean that every child gets the exact same um, level of education or need. It means that sometimes different groups of kids are going to need different resources and it's going to be up to the board to understand and learn about the school population and then allocate those uh, resources accordingly. So it might be something like um, maybe an intensive intervention for a certain group of kids or things like that. So it's just important to remember that as a candidate coming on, you're going to be doing a lot of learning. And so to keep an open mind in terms of ideas that you have about what you want to bring to the table. Harry? Yeah, I, th I think as I'm listening to you and Tammy talk, and as we were prepare preparing for this webinar, Lewitt, I'm just reminded about how essential it is for the boards to focus some of their time on students and student learning at every at every meeting, at every board meeting. It sounds so simple, but boy, are there a, a million things tugging at board members month to month. And it's too easy for that not to happen. Uh, the other thing as we think about all students is uh, we, we hear board members after newly elected saying, boy, I feel like fresh meat here. I'm getting lots of calls. This parent, Want, wishes their kid uh, had more playing time in the athletic team. That parent or family member um, wants wants the board member to help them figure out how to get how their student can be eligible or qualify for a talented and gifted or an enrichment program. And the next person wants something else. And it's so easy, as as new board members talk, it's so easy to be pulled and it, you almost like get a headache from all these requests coming in and all the while, tick tock, tick tock, the clock's running, is the board spending time focusing on the needs of all kids and across the district? Are we making decisions that are gonna benefit all kids? Another piece I think of Lou and Tammy is just how important as a, as a new board member, it, it will be for candidates once they're elected to learn and understand the needs of the district. As Tammy said earlier, if my base of experience is my own kid or my relatives or kids from my neighborhood, the district as a whole may not look just like or student needs may not be represented just what I hear about or see from my neighborhood. So, so it, again, importance of learning and understanding the needs of kids all across the district. Tammy, what else would you add? I had to find my unmute button. I hear him. So <laughs> good. I'm not the only one. Thank you. I'm sorry. I I'll just I will just reiterate really the pieces that you and Lou said as well as really understanding. I'm a visual learner, and so I often say, "What does my district look like?" But really understanding. Um, for me, it was important to dig into and learn about um, some of the some of the data that I could find about our students. And it took me a while to step back and also realize that I, while I knew my own children very well, there were lots of uh, there were lots of other students that I needed to learn and become acquainted with to really think about what their needs are. Thanks, Tammy. Let's go to then a follow up question to the same discussion is. How can boards keep the focus on serving all students? And we're gonna go into some more detail later, but Harry, what are your immediate thoughts about that? A, a couple of things that uh, are cr crossing my mind or on my mind, Lou, is um, the importance of learning, understanding, and using data, 
data about student performance at the board table and understanding as a whole board and as a new board member, what are the results? What are the outcomes that we're wanting for all kids? And understanding from data, how close are we to those outcomes or those desired results for kids right now? Um, on one hand, it might be something as simple as just coming to understand participation rates. Uh, I have four kids and all four were pretty steeped in athletics. So it's easy for me as a parent to, to view or as a board member to think, well, that's what life's like for most people. And the reality is when I learn my way in with some data and find out that, gee, 40 or 60% of our students are involved in activities, the other percentage aren't. What's that mean for their experiences in school? I think one other thing, uh, Lou and Tammy, that continually goes across my mind is our, our administrators and our teachers, that's our workforce, that's our group that are with students every day. And can we look for opportunities to learn from our administrators and teacher leaders at the board table? What kind of data and information do they find most helpful? What do they see in that data information that helps them in the quest to ensure success for all students? Tammy, what else? Harry, when I was a new board member, I learned there were um, there were a lot of things that I didn't know that I didn't know. And so I think um, echoing on your comment of really taking time to learn became really important. Um, I, I spent a lot of time quiet at the board table, uh, probably even in my first year in listening to the conversation. And then I also think that piece about, you talked about participation and maybe participation rates. And that's a great, that's a great piece of data to look at. Then I like to see that data around the board table sliced into some different ways. I like to see, um, I like to see particip participation rates by, I want to look at um, gender participation. I want to look at ethnic participation. Uh, I want to look at free and reduced lunch. Again, really looking at that whole picture of our district, that there are some great data points that are available to all of us. Uh, and through good conversation, with my peers at the board table, I can learn even more that way. It's tempting as a board member to might think, uh, I'll just take a, a, quick, a quick surprise visit into somebody's classroom and I'll do a quick survey of what I see and that will be great information. There are uh, lots of cautions that I would invite you to think about that. And one of them is that's only a, you're only seeing a very thin slice. So if I step into Lou's classroom, I only see what's happening in Lou's classroom. I, I lose vision of some other pieces and the learning that should happen together at the board table with all of you having great discussion, that's a really important, that's a really important piece of what happens. I find that my peers at the board table through the questions that they ask and the good discussion we have just helps me learn even more. Lou, I know you have more to add. <laughs> I always do, Tammy. So I'll try to keep it short so we can do a poll and then get to some questions if we have any. I also think it's important for board members to learn about the families that are taking, you know, that that send their best kids to school every day. Because again, you know, oftentimes the board doesn't always represent all constituents of the community. So if do you have a refugee population? What are their needs? Do you have families in poverty or or parents that have two incomes that need wraparound care. I'm not um, going as a new board member, I'm not going to go and uh, start knocking on doors and, and meeting people. But it would be very appropriate to start working with administrators and superintendent at the table to talk about what do we know about our families and how are we engaging them at wh where they where they are? How can we reach out and work with families? So again, it's just getting to know who our who our families are, who our students are, so we can make sure we're serving, serving all students well. So with that, let's get to another poll. And for fun, we thought we would just ask you, so now that we're talking about learning and expanding your horizons, if you were to be elected, which areas will be your first focus of learning? And we have several listed there. Um, you can select more than one answer, by the way. So we're just gonna give you time to 
think about what would be your interest in digging and in Lou, first. I, Lou, I'm wondering for veteran board members who are participating or board secretaries, just select one or more areas that you feel are going to be really important for your whole board to help onboarding with new members. Thanks, Harry. Looks like we still have some people taking some time to vote, Emily. Yep. We've got a little over half responding, so we'll just give it a few more seconds. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share out these results. Oh, Lou, that last one's a trick question <laughs> there, isn't it? <laughs> you mean, I mean all of it, Harry? You talk about what, drinking yes. to the fire hose? Yes. <laughs> Um, it's great to see that, you know, we just have people that have diverse perspectives and interests, and that's actually what creates the synergy at the board table. So we have uh, some folks wanting to learn more about teaching and learning. It's kind of spread throughout uh, teaching and learning, school finance, mental health, which is important, and the rest are like, yeah, just all of it. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. We're going to turn it out over to you if I can get the PowerPoint working. There we go. All right, we're gonna invite you to unmute yourself. You've got some um, experience here. Staff, if you have a question, unmute yourself. Uh, let us know your name and, and share your question. Hi, this is Charlene Sauer. And I guess my question is, you guys have talked about population data sets. Was there any either as a, as a school board member or as someone in this mentor role, what are like your top three data sets that a newbie should go for right away to understand? Great question. Harry, do you want to start us off? That's a beauty. Thank you. Um, of course, my, my heart is near and dear about just for board members and new board members in particular to help get a sense What's, what's the health of, or the current picture of student learning in our district? And we get everything isn't measured by a test score and there are limitations to test scores. But by the same token, uh, assessments or test scores do paint some part of the picture. The tapestry here is in all kinds of data and information. So certainly for me, one of the, one of the top areas is gonna be what's the big picture on student learning in our district? And I'll give a couple examples. Are, are there uh, content or subject areas uh, or areas of learning where our kids maybe are stronger than others? We may be in a district where reading and writing overall, our, our students are, are performing uh, stronger, uh, higher, reaching higher levels than maybe mathematics or maybe the sciences. That, that would be an example. Another one might be, there could be, it, it wouldn't be unusual that there might be differences between uh, areas where our students are learning uh, more effectively at the elementary than they are at the secondary. And then Charlene, I find myself thinking about not only what I've just described, that kind of paints that, that snapshot or stagnant picture, but what are the trends over time? Is it improving or is it staying flat or declining? Does the, as we all know, depending on the district um, and size, um, Sometimes when we just look at all kids, the data, it can mask or hide or gloss over subgroups of kids that aren't, the story isn't as strong or it's a different picture. So certainly, and Tammy mentioned this earlier, looking at the data by some subgroups is really going to help. Um, Lou, Tammy, what else, what would make your immediate list for, for uh, uh, learning data and information? I think one of the things that stuck out for me when I was a new board member um, was just looking again at my district makeup and understanding you'll uh, at the board table most likely hear a lot of conversation around your free and reduced lunch rate. And Charlene, in the district I come from, it's a pretty high rate. And I quickly, um, quickly had to learn that if students come to school hungry, we can't achieve in those areas that Harry just talked about that are so important. And so what is our, what is the district's role into helping with that? And while it seems odd to say food is important to student achievement, 
uh, it's hard to learn. If all of you are sitting and you're a little bit hungry right now because it's a, it's a noon hour, it's a time we've trained our bodies to eat and you're not getting to eat, it gets a little harder to concentrate. So for me to really look at what our, our makeup looked like, we, um, we also spent some time looking at attendance and getting students to school. So Lou mentioned you may have a refugee population in your district and, and maybe, that's not, um, maybe that's not top of mind for you, which is okay, but is there an issue with, um, we've had students that won't necessarily, parents don't understand putting your, your students on a bus is a safe thing to do with a stranger right, a bus driver who they don't know, and allow them to take them to school. And building a bridge of that trust becomes really important to get them into our building so we can start to focus on student learning. So for me, I would really say, take a, take a really um, close look at your, your district and think about those pieces as you're looking at, as you're looking at your data. Lou? Oh. Well, just a couple of the subgroups that Harry mentioned and that Tammy mentioned that you would look at are the differences between gender. Do you see achievement differences or attendance differences in gender? There's also race and ethnicity. Are we serving kids all well? And if not, uh, administrators can talk, start talking about what maybe some of the initiatives are that they are working to, to address those. So special ed kids, what are their needs? It's okay to look at different groups of people to see how students of how they're performing and attending and things like that, just so that we can start talking about solutions, not as blame, but as solutions. Thank you, Charlene, for the question. Uh, do you or does anybody else have another question for us? Charlene asked about where to get the data loose, so I'm just going to tack on a short piece would be um, it will de it will depend on what kind of data, but it, part of many districts as part of the onboarding process after the November elections, the superintendent, um, the board president may already have have some of that information teed up or ready to share with the whole board or certainly maybe a deeper look with new members and then the whole board does a, a, a shorter abbreviated look at that kind of data and information. I have to tell you, uh, most superintendents we, we know or curriculum directors and superintendents as a pair uh, uh, will welcome uh, board members and, and new board members wanting to learn about the health of student achievement. Another piece I was gonna just add in is, and this this will come without saying, but just big picture, what, what, what's, what are the enrollment trends in our district? And, and what are, what's, the, what are, what's the big picture on our finances? And why do we say enrollment? Because that's the, that's the heaviest hitter and influencer on the amount of money that your district receives. It's tied directly to and reflects enrollment. So if your enrollment's growing, um, good news, you have unique uh, opportunities and problems to solve. If it's flat or declining, some big, bigger challenges there. And, and it's helpful to just know what's the big picture on our enrollment, because that's going to be a lead in for what we can expect on, on our financial condition. So thanks for your question. Who else? Hi, I'm Cheryl Benson. Um, I'm wondering if you had to give somebody a one sentence elevator pitch on what is a school board member, what would you say? I'm nominating Tammy to take first pitch and then Lou and I can add in. This is good. This is a trick if I have to be short and concise, Cheryl. Um, I'm gonna first start by saying there is no greater work in the state of Iowa to be done right now than to be a school board member. So uh, an incredible heartfelt thank you for, if you've been a member, thank you. If you're considering running, thank you because it's, um, we are all incredibly passionate about the work uh, and, I, and I've lived the work for a lot of years. Um, I believe that a school board member is an individual who's willing to listen, look carefully uh, into data and ask great questions and be a lifelong learner. And, and Cheryl, would you reframe your question again, please? I got caught up listening to Tammy talk and lost sight of your question. Sure. Um, I said if if you could say in one sentence, you know, kind of like an elevator pitch of what is a school board member, what would you say? I'm thinking about that for a few seconds. I'll add to Tammy's thought, you know, being a locally elected official to champion public education 
and to ensure, and I'm going to go back to what we said, uh, to ensure high and equitable student learning for all kids. I mean, that to me is is the essence of it, but th there's certainly more there. Harry, what would you say? Yeah, I would say something along the line, Cheryl, of um, uh, to uh, work with the rest of the board to, to provide um, an inspiring and a, and, a, and a doable vision and direction for the district. This is the direction we're headed. We can do this, but but challenge themselves as a board, stretch. So that'd be my take. It's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Who else has something they'd want to either comment on or ask? This is Kayleen Hawkins. I'm a current board member uh, about two years now. And I have a comment. I think there was uh, something that was brought up about you know playing time and all this type of questions you get approached with these small things. Uh, some of the advice, we've had a lot of different things happen. And I think some of the advice I would say is take it to the lowest level. Uh, use it as a learning opportunity. Have the student approach the coach. Have the student approach the teacher. Um, it, it doesn't need to be mom and dad. Um, and I think we forget that. This is their education. And, and I think that's the most important thing that we as adults sometimes get, you know, are they the ones having the problems with the masks? You know, who's having the problem? It's not grandma and grandpa learning here, it's the kids. And I think we need to make sure that it, it stays at the lowest level. And then if you're having problems, if the kid's not able to get through, then that's where mom and dad needs to step in. Maybe they need to talk to the coach or the teacher or whoever, um, but we forget that. And, and I think we need to, you know, let this education, it, it's theirs too. And use that as a learning opportunity. And then my second thing is a question. What happens as a board member if I just feel like I'm not getting my questions answered to, whether it's a teacher or administrator or other board members? Do you have any advice um, for that question? I'll take first stab, Lou and Tammy jump in so if, if as a board member um you, you have a question and you feel like you're not getting information or it's not being answered um i would persist it, it will it will depend maybe who you're persisting with it could be that it's information that um is is best suited or well suited for the superintendent to provide it could be that it's information that the business official um, is best suited to provide, but it makes sense to ensure that the soup's in the loop and the superintendent's aware that 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 the business official is providing that information to a board member. It could be that your board president or, or board vice president are better suited. So I think part of the, my my response is uh, determining who perhaps is a source and then talking with them about it. And and certainly the, the board president is going to be in a unique role. They're, they're another sitting board member like you. So their perspective is going to be really helpful on what, what might be causing the delay or the snag or the misunderstanding and what information is needed. Tammy Lou, what else would you add? That's a great question, by the way. Harry, I think you're um, spot on with everything that you uh, uh, just shared. And I think um, framing framing how you want to ask the question, I would also say working to get questions out ahead of board meetings is always most helpful. It allows your administration team to bring answers to the table so you can talk about it as board members as well. Um, and there are some topics that you, know, you may want to set up a, a one-off opportunity to have a conversation with your board president or your superintendent to say, help me learn more about XYZ topic or, or what that looks like. I often say that um, the board team and the soup, it, it's like any relationship in your life, whether it's somebody that you're married to, whether it's a dear friend that you have, communication is so important. And to be you know, patient with each other and, and say, you know, here's what I'm trying to learn and here's what I'm trying to understand. Uh, help me, you know, help me do that. Lou? Well, I was going to say also, sometimes I think it just depends on the, the nature of the question. If the nature of the question is going to require a lot of research and, and staff time, that might not match with the priority work areas. If it's a simple question that somebody can get an answered. So I think part of it depends upon the nature of the question, the amount of 
time it's going to take, and then what's the priority work of the board? And so I think, again, as Harry and Tammy said, going back and talking with the superintendent and the board president about your question, and what's a good time frame, and is that an appropriate use of time right now? Let's go, at, we're going to go ahead and move on because we have some other topics to discuss, but keep your questions, drop, drop them into chat, and we will leave time at the end for any that we haven't had time to address. So the next uh, question or goal area that we're going to talk about is how boards do positively impact student learning. The good news is, is that we know. <laughs> I love this slide, by the way. This slide is put together. It's actually Iowa students actively learning. And we uh, at ISB conducted our own research years ago on if boards do make a difference with student learning. The, the research from our own work and from work of others, along with our years of uh, practice with boards, is that we do know that when boards play certain roles well, when they have take certain steps and actions and keep their focus on uh, the governance level work aimed at student learning, they absolutely do make a difference in student learning. So what does that look like? Well, Harry, you talked about that um, a, a couple minutes ago and we're gonna dive deeper into that, but one of the very most important roles that boards take is they are the dream keepers, as you said, Harry, charting that vision for the district. Uh, believing more is possible for students, that you've got the staff to make it happen, and wanting the best possible future for your staff, for your students, and then setting some ambitious goals to make that happen. The research is really clear that there has never been improvement in student learning in the absence of goals. So setting a vision and establishing goals is the key role of the board. Next, providing support. So you have the high expectations for your staff and students. You got to provide the support to get there or you're setting the system up for, for failure. So support is can look in lots of different ways. One of the first things we think about is finance. And absolutely, finance support is important. So you've got, as I think Harry mentioned that earlier, if you've got a set of goals, you need to make sure your budget aligns to support uh, the work that's going to, to take to achieve those goals. So if you've got a goal around, um, let's say, reading comprehension, you want to make sure that your professional development aligns with that and that your students have, excuse me, your staff has the resources that they need to, to make progress in improving student learning on that goal. So you've got your expectations, you've got your support, and then another key role of the board is monitoring. And this isn't like with a hammer, we call this soft accountability, where the board is checking in frequently, asking, how's it going? What's our, what, what's our progress on reaching our goals? Uh, what can we expect of it as indicators of progress? And then ask, asking along the way, and how can we help? So setting, setting a vision and goals, providing support, and monitoring along the way are three really important roles that we talk about all the time on how boards uh, can serve the district well and ensure high and equitable student achievement for all. Um, so let's move to our discussion and talk about what does the board's role in this work look like. And I'll just go back to the first uh, uh, mention on that last slide is that, again, having that clear vision to provide a direction an ambitious direction on what you want for students and making sure your goals are aligned to that uh, is a key role of the board. Harry, can you talk a little bit about your thoughts around that? You bet, and I'm, I'm gonna zoom in a comment on vision and goals, and then I'm gonna zoom in more on support. But uh, a number, a lot of districts are, are pretty good about setting goals. And while yes, they may fuss some about are these smart goals are these concrete enough do we have the right measures that's work to be done critical piece the, the, the part that sometimes doesn't get discussed or whole board understanding isn't maybe as deep as it's going to need to be to reach that goal is around support and and so we, we urge and, and this came out in the, in the research lou mentioned earlier about if this were 15 20 years ago Mostly when it came to the board's role in kids learning, it was opinion. But over the last 15, 20 years, there's actually a good body of research that helps undergird or affirm that the board has, 
has a powerful role and, and an, is an influencer in kids learning. And that support role is, is one of those key pieces. So I find myself thinking about what does the bird's work look like? Well, ask yourselves as a newly elected board member, as a candidate, if you're elected, um, what, how, in what ways is your board learning from administrators and teacher leaders about the key supports they need to reach the goals? Because as Lou said, if we have powerful goals, but we don't talk about the support, then they're just hollow dreams. So how do we make those real? Well, important piece is whole board understanding and committing to provide the, 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 the most important support that your staff needs to reach those goals. And, and at, when, when, when that kind of conversation happens at the board table and your superintendent, principals, teacher leaders are able to interact with the board or share their thinking around what do we most need to achieve this reading goal or to achieve that goal to improve kids' engagement or to, to achieve a technology implementation goal. Um, again, understanding on the front end what that key support is. And my final thought, Lou, just fits with what you said earlier, of course, it's hard to do anything without money, but there's all kinds of other support, moral support, the, the advocating and, and being a chief spokesperson as a board with the community around those goals, talking to everybody in the community you can about the goals and the support it needs. I kind of laugh sometimes and say to board members, wouldn't it be nice to be at a spot where when you walk in the grocery store, people avoid you because they know you're going to talk to them about those darn goals and what it takes to achieve them. But that is such a critical role. Tammy, what else would you, uh, other insights would you add? Well, Harry, I think of, um, I, I'm going to tag on to your support piece, because when I think of what does the work look like, I'll give a little bit of a physical example if I can. And that is when it's time to put your budget together. And as a board, when you understand what your vision is and what your goals are and what you need, then thinking about and I'll key into the financial piece as where, how will, how will those dollars be allocated um, within the budget? And in my district, I look for uh, my business manager to say, here, some things we don't have a choice on. And here's, here's a little bit of what this plan looks like. Dollars have to be used in certain places. How do we best support what those goals are? And what I like to say at the board table is, if I have to choose, if I have to make tough choices, just like in my own budget, in my personal life, sometimes I can't do everything that I wanna do all at once. If I have to make decisions or choices, how do I keep those choices as far away from the classroom as possible? So supporting a program, supporting staff, what other options do I have? And sometimes you have to think really creatively about what that could look like. But for me, I think about that in, in the budgeting process and how am I gonna financially support the, the goals that, that we've laid out. And then I think, Harry, back to your piece of you have to revisit them. And sometimes you have to pivot a little bit. That's okay too. But monitor, monitor what's happening and have that great discussion at the, at the board table with each other. Also, along with that, I can tell you that not only the finance support um, and it's the teachers watch board meetings. <laughs> I can remember being a teacher in the classroom and when a board member or board stops to recognize their staff and the hard work that they're doing, I can tell you that moral support is huge. So that's just another way that board that boards and board members can really support their staff a long way because this is really, really hard work. And I know you get that. And just stopping time to celebrate those successes along the way really, really pays dividends. And I think, Emily, you're going to drop in an article for those that are interested. This is, when we talked about the research, this is a one-pager great research brief that uh, talks about the eight characteristics of highly effective boards. And it's gonna cover some of the things that we talked about and some of the things we haven't. So for those of you that are interested in reading more, um, she's gonna put that, thanks Emily. Um, so uh, enjoy, that's a resource from the National School Boards Association from which IASB belongs. And it's a resource for uh, local elected officials and us as well. So and thank Lou, you. Lou, Lou, I drop in, just wanna build on one more thing that Tammy said. It, 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 give me a minute here. 
we think <laughs> back to you know the best laid plans, clear ambitious goals, powerful goals a district has, and in those cases where the board has a pretty good sense, has interacted at the board table with staff leadership around what's it take to reach these goals, what supports needed, best laid plan there. But if, if there isn't a monitoring plan, if there isn't a progress report schedule so that those goals are revisited and progress toward them, as Tammy said, isn't revisited multiple times during the year, then the sticking power and the impact of those goals are not likely to be what they could be. So you, you, you ask yourself, what, what, how is our board doing at allocating time to hear and discuss, not just listen, but hear and discuss with staff and administrative leadership what the data says, how our, what our progress is toward those goals. So thanks, Lou. I'm off my little diatribe now. <laughs> no, <laughs> thanks, Harry. What questions do you have for us on, on this, on what the research says about the actions that boards take and the, what boards look like that, that are known to make a difference, a significant difference? Okay, we're gonna uh, let you keep pondering those questions. We're still monitoring chat. Feel free to drop those in, but we'll go ahead and move on to, to the last discussion area. And that's goal three. Uh, we um, know that this is a, especially in the last <laughs> few months, <laughs> keeping the focus on student learning is a challenge. And so we're gonna talk about the importance of board teams um, making sure they're laser focused on keeping the main thing the main thing. What are the challenges and opportunities and, and actually how do they make that happen? Uh, oftentimes board members tell us that during board meetings they aren't spending much time on student learning because a lot of uh, big and little issues vie for the board's time such as renovating a building or uh, if there's, as Harry said earlier, declining enrollment and there's going to be facing budget cuts, those are very important things that are, are so critical that they consume the board's time. It's important though, that when those kinds of uh, projects are finished, that the board gets their focus back and gets laser focus back on student learning. But that can be a real challenge. And so we wanna talk about uh, what that looks like so that that the board can help keep their focus and keeping student learning as their highest priority. So let's go into uh, our discussion and think about how uh, what are some insights on how the board can do that. Tammy, I think you're going to start us off. I think, Lou, I'm going to um, thinking about something that Harry just said. I think most of you are aware we've we've spent 18, 20, almost 24 months in a pandemic. And that changes your focus as a board. And, and just like Lou said, building projects and things that are really important, but it's easy for that to all of a sudden became, become your only for, focus. And so for me, really thinking about how do I focus on student learning, those, those pieces are important, but really coming um, to the board table prepared, really making sure that I, um, I've, I've looked over the topics that we're gonna talk about. So I'm really ready to ask questions or if or if there's data that more data that I would like to see I'm asking about that prior to the board meeting for me I learn so much from my peers at the board table so the more discussion that I can have with them helps me keep that focus uh, on student learning and then tying each item back on our agenda to think about what goal is that is that supporting you will have business of the district that you will need to do uh, it's like the business of your household. It it just happens. But the bright spot for me is the the pieces where um, we can really focus on that on that student learning at the board table. Your conversation will be richer. Um, your community and your staff will appreciate you hearing and and asking those deep questions and learning together. So I think really being prepared, um, asking those, getting your questions to your superintendent ahead of time if you need more data, and then be ready to talk about it um, at, the, at the board table to really focus on what that learning looks like. Lou, Harry, I'll pass it off to you. 
I, I, I'll just jump in and then Harry, I, I've heard new board members say, I'm the one only asking, not all districts, some, I'm I'm the one asking new questions, I'm the only one asking questions and kind of feel like they're out there on a limb uh, because maybe more seasoned veterans know the information or maybe they're just not in the habit of talking. What we say is keep it up, keep asking the questions. As Tammy said, talk to the superintendent in advance or the board president because you might be able to get your question question answered in advance, but then ask it in during the meeting, because if you have that question, so might your public. So so don't um, be afraid to, to, if you have a learning need to get your question asked. Harry, what else would you wanna say? I think that's good. I'll be quiet on this point. It will keep us moving along, thanks. Okay, we have a fun scenario that we want to, um, uh, focus on next and uh, we're going to have a scenario on which Nancy Newcomer tries to follow through on her promise to voters after she won her election seat. Tammy? Thanks Lou. I have to say um, that IS, uh, ISB, we have a great sense of humor and um, we enjoy uh, putting these scenarios together and having names like Nancy Newcomer. So uh, as you as you work with IASB, you would you would hear more of this. But Nancy Newcomer has run for the board, and her primary reason, and by the way, you could change this primary reason with just about anything that might um, you might feel better fits your own district. But her primary reason is she's going to reopen her beloved and historical Truman Elementary. It was a neighborhood school that all the the previous board had closed. After all, the Truman students deserve their own school. And as PTO president of Truman Elementary, Nancy was successful. She won a, a seat on her school board. True to her word, shortly after the election, Nancy met with the superintendent and the board president to pursue ways to get reopening the school or upcoming and on an upcoming board agenda. So Nancy went right to work. Now, my question to each of you, or and I think um, Harry and Lou, we're gonna we're gonna share out a little bit some insights and advice on um, Nancy's eager uh, steps to jump in as a board member. And I will say that not only do we have a sense of humor, but these scenarios come from practice and work with boards. So uh, these come from our experiences. We Harry, just do you change, change change the names <laughs> to protect the innocent, right? <laughs> okay, Tammy, do you want to start us off on your thoughts? I, I certainly can. So again, I would say whether it's reopening a grade school or uh, you, you could put this, you could replace that with just about anything, but really thinking about what are some of the challenges that can, can come out of a situation like this. And I first like to say, I am sure Nancy has uh, everyone's best interest at heart. What I would ask Nancy to do is one, really think about um, honor the work that's been done before you stepped on the board. You might not have agreed with everything that's happened, but there was a lot of time and energy placed into whatever that whatever that activity or that item was. So I, I would ask that you remember that about previous board members. And then thinking about what's where's the work already, what's already happened. So there are probably contracts that are in place that have been um, signed and put work into motion. So whether maybe they're going to sell that grade school, whether they're going to do something different with it. There's a lot of time and probably financial investment that's been spent. So undoing that isn't quite as simple as just saying, hey, let's put it back on the agenda and talk about it. There's probably some legal pieces uh, when a contract is involved that also have to be thought about. Um, I would also say when you're asking to have something put on your um, board agenda, we are driven as board members by the policies that we set in our district. And so what does your board policy tell you about how do I, as a board member, get something placed on the agenda? Um, your policy will give you great advice. And as board members, if, if you need to tweak policies, you're also able to do that. But you, there's probably a policy set. So I would also encourage Nancy to, to look at her policy. Lou, Harry, what else? Well, my take would be in, th in this case, Nancy clearly has a passion and she is committed to the to the, the school that that closed and, and with good reason uh, from her vantage point uh, but she may not it, she the very thing she's passionate about may be clouding her vision about the district overall 
and what's the financial impact or other impact, space impact or learning impact of if, if, if she's so tightly focused on just that one building can skew her vision. I think the other thing I, I think about Tammy is, um, and it's not a reason to avoid bringing it up, but what's the impact gonna be? If you, you think about the amount of time and energy that may go into revisiting a decision that was made, contracts and things are already in motion. How much is this gonna become something that competes for time with the very thing the board needs to focus on and that's student learning and keeping that front and center. So thank you. Lou, what else? Oh, I think just 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 to touch on the high point, I think what you're saying too is that you only know so much information as a candidate. It's a lot, but you get a whole different perspective when you get at the board table and really learn more around the whole district, the needs, and there's a lot more information that is available to board members that really weren't a, a, available in the same way to candidates and to the public. So just it's important to keep that in mind. So with that, let's go to see if there are, let's see, are we moving? Oh, I'm doing a wrap up and then we'll get to questions. <laughs> okay, so again, uh, just our three big ideas to keep in mind that the school board services is the, the primary responsibility. Moral obligation is serving all students. We know that boards uh, can and do make a significant difference when they play their governance roles well and especially when they're keeping the focus on student students and student learning. So let's move to our last uh, section before we talk about some upcoming events that we have for new board members and those are questions. Last couple minutes, let's open it up for you to see if you have any other questions for us. Lou, there's a great comment uh, in chat and Jamie uh, hats off to you. She says if Nancy would have watched the first webinar, she'd know not to make promises. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Jamie, I think Harry's clicking his heels underneath his table. <laughs> It's a related piece. That's a comment, Lou. I can remember a couple of years ago working with a board that if I were to say their name out loud, most people on this webinar would go, yeah, that 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 would be seen as a pretty well-respected district and a board team. And they were and they're committed and they're around the table for a, a conversation kind of like we are today about roles and responsibilities of tune-up. And they looked at each other about a half hour into it and said, holy smokes, we have been consumed, consumed for two years in this building project and at what cost? It needed lots of our attention, but we've not been paying much attention, had much time or energy to focus on kids learning and some other district priorities. So for them, that was kind of an aha moment and a chance to take a deep breath and say, we got to get back into the habit and get into a routine of spending adequate time on student learning. And it was so cool to hear. And that that's what many boards are facing. And Harry, thank you so much. I think those of you that have uh, have been working with us through these webinars can tell that we really do value you and your role. We have an uplifting view of board members. We believe that you can serve well and we're here to support you. Um, Harry just gave a great example. We work one-on-one -on -one with board, mem board members through phone calls. We also work with board teams right at the board table as coacher, coaching and facilitators, but we also have um, our statewide events and we have our upcoming convention right after elections five minutes after the election we have our state conference on November 17th and 18th that's uh, mark your calendars for that because we would really encourage you it's a really important time to come together meet with other board members and learn about some trends and issues and more information about governing governance and what that looks like including Tammy on Wednesday the pre-convention workshop which will be Ready, Set, Govern. And I think <laughs> it's gonna be an awesome workshop uh, on Wednesday, November 17th. And there's two sessions about a half a day each. Mm -hmm. And did I say I hear it's gonna be awesome? You did, I heard <laughs> you say that. Uh, registration is already open. You can um, talk with your board secretary. We have ways for people to get registered even at the last minute. So please mark your time if we haven't said so. We'd love to see you there. Uh, in the meantime, we are just a phone call or email away. Uh, we do appreciate your interest in serving as a school board. 
and we think that there's no no greater service. Uh, this webinar was recorded and will be posted on the website along with the PowerPoint within 48 hours. Again, on behalf of IASB, thank you for your interest. Uh, please reach out if we can support you and Harry and Tammy and Emily. Thank you for your uh, service today and your help as well. Uh, we hope to see you soon. Take care, everyone.